All right guys, so today what I want to talk to you about is one of the more common questions that I get asked about this 1991 convertible and it's how do the 17 inch ponies fit on your car and or what modifications did you have to make to make them fit, so on and so forth. So some people are a little more concerned with front end fitment and now that's an eight inch wide wheel in the front. I think the vast majority of people are more concerned with the rear fitment which is a 10 inch wide wheel. So what I figured I'd do, I'll get the car up in the air, we'll pull a tire, I'll show you everything I had to do to make these wheels fit and or show you how well they fit and try to put, if you're looking for these wheels, try to put any, any fears you may have to rest. Now, if you caught my video last week, I did it on the 1977 Bronco, it was kind of a soup to nuts overview of what I got into the shop before we started working on it and if you want I'll give you a link to that video. But if you're interested in seeing the update on that, stick around to the very end and I'll give you a quick walk around on what we've got done and or how it's all gone. But for now, we'll get this car up in the air and I'll show you what we're dealing with. All right guys, I'll get you in from the back end here first. This is, like I say, where I get most of my questions from. So here's passenger side, tire to inner wheel well, quite a bit of room there call it an inch or, or more front side of the passenger little tighter but still lots of clearance okay lots of room for my e-brake cable these are the stock e-brake cables stock control arms here on the driver's side about the same as the passenger side a little tighter in the front area and in the back, again, lots and lots of clearance up in there. So no need to worry about anything there. Now the one kind of quote unquote major modification I had to make, and some of you might've caught this already, but I did remove the quad shock. Sometimes you can flip your quad shock around. I did this in my green coupe and you can gain enough room if you flip the, the body side of the shock around, you can gain enough room to clear a, a wider rim and or wider tire. In my case, there was no working with the stock quad shock. And the stock quad shocks, I mean, at this point in time are, are pretty much shot and hooped. So I don't even know how much they're doing. Now, I know that a lot of people are gonna go, ah, oh, you don't have tubular control arms and therefore you should keep your quad shock. Honestly, these things were shot anyway. And the other side of it is I don't get out and beat the snot out of this car. I'm not launching it. I'm not doing burnouts. I just cruise in it. So until I get some beefier control arms in the back of this, uh, just take it easy with it. It's got two seven three gears and I mean with these Toyo tires It's almost hard to spin the tires. So yeah, I removed the quad shock from both sides and That gained me enough clearance now. There is an option that Bilstein makes. I believe LMR sells them um, They They're a little bit of a different design and that the the actual rod and body of the shock is thinner and I don't know if they would work in my situation. I wish I had a set to try and show you, but that is an option for um, running a, like a thinner quad shock. Like I say, in my case, I just got rid of them. Now, the other kind of half modification that I gotta show you, I need to peel a tire, but I'll maybe take you up to the front of the car and show you with the tire on how my clearance is up there. Right, and as far as front end clearance goes, I got lots there. I get a little close to the strut and the tire and wheel, but by no means am I rubbing or, or anywhere that needs to be cause for concern. Now keep in mind this car does have lowering springs in the front, iBox sport lines. I've got stock coils in the back. I probably should have mentioned that. They're stock height, haven't been cut or anything. Um, driver's side, again, Lots of room. On both sides. About the only place that I get a little tight is this, these lowering springs really brought the front end of this car down. You can see I'm, I'm fairly tucked. 
but I haven't run into any clearance issues there yet and I haven't scuffed the tires at all. Both sides are very, very similar. I've hit some pretty big bumps in them and had absolutely no rubbing or no clearance issues. All right, let's pop a tire off here and have a look from the inside. Okay guys, so the rear wheel well. Now, you can see here, I've ever so slightly kind of kissed the inside of this wheel well when I first put the tires on. But I just want to show you, I didn't like ruin the tire, okay? Like in all honesty, at a real close look, you can't even tell that I've touched the inside of the wheel well, like anywhere. So that little bit of rubbing, quite honestly, I think it was more from like getting into a harder corner and just having a little bit of tire lean on it. So to rectify this, for any of you that haven't heard of this before or tried it, you can bump this in ever so slightly. Like there's nothing behind it. You can see I've got like a full knuckles worth of clearance uh, behind here. You can move this in real easy, like rubber mallet. I think I used a composite mallet, but it doesn't take much to move this stuff and you can clearance this real nicely. Like you can see, I mean, I think some people that are running like massive tires have this beat right in, but it didn't take much to make this work for me at all. So it was just through the back and up here. I, in all honesty, I don't think I had to do anything on the other side, but on this side I did. And then now you can see a little easier. Here's where my quad shock stud is and it bolts here to the diff. So pulled that, tried flipping it, wouldn't work. And then just had to mooch the inside of the wheel well in ever so slightly. So, and then just a quick little recap on the front guys. I, I literally had to do no modifications, okay? Like everything fit perfectly fine with the eight inch wide pony on the front. Right, so there you have it guys. I mean, it's quite easily doable for those of you that have reached out and contacted me. I hope that this helps put any of your fears to rest. Like if you can still find a set of these 17 inch ponies, specifically 10 wide in the rear and eight wide in the front, very, very easily doable on a stock Fox. I should also mention like, this is stock running gear, okay? Stock spindles, stock axle length, stock everything, okay? so. They're very, very easily doable. Now, for those of you that stuck around to the end for the Bronco, here you go. Okay, so uh, put these hood props on. These are from Wild Horse Broncos, I think, or maybe it was Tom's Bronco. I can't remember. Um, went in here with some riv nuts and some like proper Torx head screws. They, the kit has like a, a metal almost looks like a wood screw but anyway i think these will hold up a lot better so put on the hood props uh redid the distributor as it turns out this vacuum advance wasn't working at all so put a new vacuum advance on it completely rebuilt the carburetor rebushed uh the primary shaft and secondary shaft these shafts would like wobble all over the place and they were leaking vacuum properly set the timing when this thing came into me it had about eight degrees of timing now it's set at like 12 12 and change and this little non ho 302 really enjoys that new set of plugs uh new master cylinder uh what else i kind of rebuilt the transfer case handle this thing somebody had just cut this thing off and like welded this portion of the shaft to the, to the lower portion of the stick. And anyway, so I re-welded it and kind of grinded it all smooth, painted it up. Um, dicked around with the Dakota digital gauges, the fuel gauge wasn't set right. Tried setting the Speedo, found out that the Speedo pulse sender from the transfer case is actually bad. So I got one of those coming from Dakota Digital. Kind of went through the column. This whole like everything about it was loose and, and goofy. So redid that. Um, around the back. It's kind of a 30 degree angle. 
angle, so be good. And yeah, this thing rocks now. I mentioned in my last video that we were thinking about maybe changing the gear ratio in it, but we're definitely not going to anymore. This little 302 had a lot of life in it. It was just the carburetor and how it was set up was really, really doing this truck a disservice. So anyway, had the client come by and he took it for a scoot and absolutely loves it. Says it drives like a whole new truck. So that makes me happy. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate you tagging along. I hope you found both the wheel and tire set up, the 17 inch ponies uh, information informative. And for those of you that are tagging along on the Bronco, I hope you, you like that too. It's a wicked little truck. It's sure been a joy to work on. But uh, yeah, as always, please feel free to reach out if you got any questions or comments. If you're shopping for a set of wheels like this and, and you're unsure, you, maybe there's something I didn't cover that you're wondering about, please hit me up, guys. I'm here for you. I love this community and I love helping it. So by all means, please hit me up. Anyway, that'll do it for this one, guys. Thanks a lot for tagging along. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye for now.